What are your strengths? What makes you special? What are your superpowers? And what would it mean for you to operate today and frankly, every day from your strengths? This is what's motivating me this week. Hello, I'm Michael Sherlock, CEO of Shock Your Potential. Every day I train and develop professionals and business owners around the world. And although we're always talking about ways to be more effective, to have more impact, to achieve greater results, I do it in a way that challenges people also to operate from their strengths. Sounds easy, right? Well, I know it really doesn't. <laughs> and it's definitely not as easy. It takes a little work. So first of all, let me ask you and be honest, how many of you, when I asked about your strengths, first instead began mentally listing all of your weaknesses? You know, they just start going that long list. Oh my gosh, what do you mean strengths? I've got so many things that I do wrong. You know, that's a natural reaction. You know, we all tend to be much more comfortable deal, detailing our faults or comparing ourselves to others than to actually just even acknowledge our strengths or that we have strengths. You know, sometimes it can even feel more like you're bragging. But I'm going to try and take us a little bit farther than that hesitation we have and into a new place where you can actually not only acknowledge those strengths, but operate from them. Now, you also may be saying, <laughs> how can I ever operate at my peak, though, when I just keep getting pulled back into my list of thoughts? And I, I know, I get it, I hear you. Let me give you an example. Let's say I ask you to complete a task, like maybe making your way through a cornfield maze. You know, it's uh, fall in North America right now. We've got those going all over the place. And I say, I want you to complete this as quickly as possible. I want you to do it making the fewest mistakes possible. I'm not gonna give you a map. You just have to figure it out on your, on your own. But hey, let me tell you, before you go in, I just want to make sure you remember, you have a terrible sense of direction. I mean, you're probably not going to make it out. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. Possibly you're even going to have to call us to come save you, but good luck. So do you think that you'd complete that quickly or with few mistakes? Or what if instead your pep talk was maybe a little bit more positive saying things like, I'm always amazed. Oh, <laughs> Get what I did there, amazed at the cornfield maze. I'm always amazed at your sense of direction. I cannot believe how creative you are. I know that when you go in there and you face challenges, which you will, you're going to find ways to get through them. So here's the thing. We don't actually know if one pep talk will make you faster than the other or whether or not you'll make fewer mistakes, but the negative talk certainly can't help, right? You know, we don't like hearing it from other people, but we tend to do it ourselves. And so when I talk today about operating from your strengths, it's a lot easier to say to that other person, don't talk to me that way. You can't say those things to me instead of us saying, hey, don't talk to myself that way. I want you to focus on your strengths, identify them, ponder them. Need I say embrace them? <laughs> so today I'm going to give you my top 10 tips for operating from your strengths. Tip number one, write them out. Yep, you've heard me say this many, many, many times before. Get an actual piece of paper and a pen. I know, old school, it's important. There's some psychological things that happen with that. And write out a list of as many strengths as you can possibly think of. Just let them all go. Don't put that pen down until you've written every single thing that comes to mind. I get it. I know it's hard to even start that list. You know, because we're not in the mode of always thinking about positive thoughts about ourselves. So be gentle with yourself. Give yourself a little time. Take that time to just come up with anything and everything that you think of. Hopefully you'll have nine or 10 things at least on there on that list, but near the end, you're probably going to be feeling like you're grasping at straws. There's no right answers. There's no wrong answers. There's no right number to come up with. There's no wrong number to come up with. Just write them down. Tip number two, read the list back to yourself. 
out loud. Again, if you follow me, you know I say this over and over and over again, but reading your list out loud forces you to really acknowledge what you've written and begin moving towards actually embracing it and believing it. And that's critical because as we make these uh, statements of our positivity and our strengths and we say them out loud, they settle down a little bit deeper into our psyche. They tend to have more weight and they help us to start to say, hey, that is something that is important to me. That is one of my strengths and I'm going to recognize it and celebrate it. Tip number three, circle three. Yes, three. I know you may like all of them, but I want the top three that you feel are most prevalent. Now, don't worry whether or not you feel like, oh, are they related to my job or my business or my career goals or my personal life? It doesn't matter. Just circle three that you see most often in yourself, the ones that make you most proud of. And yes, it's okay to feel proud. In fact, it's really important for what we do here that you feel proud. So when you circle those three, you're making a statement. You're not saying the other ones aren't important. You're saying, these are the three that I see in myself, that I recognize in myself most frequently. Tip number four, take those three and write them on a separate piece of paper. Now, I remember being in school where they used to have us kind of fold the paper over. So we'd have like three, like, I don't know, columns, whatever. The paper was equally folded into three sections. I don't care. You don't have to do it. It's not fancy. You can write a squiggly line or write them one at a time. It doesn't matter. But this is really important. I know you're going, Michael, what's up with the paper again? Why can't I type this? Why can't I put it into my phone? Because there is something different that happens with our bodies and our minds when we write pen to paper, and it is important. Tip number five, pull out your favorite timer. You know, in the olden days, we actually had timers. They were like an egg timer. They still have egg timers, but you'd like, you know, turn it and go click, 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 click. Oh, yeah. They still have that when I get my hair done. Uh, yeah, I also remember using the timer on the oven. Okay, I know I'm old. It happens. I realize we now have timers on our phones, so that's fine. Pull out your favorite timer, set it for 60 seconds. Now, before you hit go on it, pick one of those three. And first of all, you are going to get in the mindset for over those 60 seconds, you're going to write as many ways that you use that strength for good on a regular basis and you're gonna do it for 60 seconds. Now, let me give you an example. Let's say one of your strengths is kindness. So you might write down things like, I hold the door for people at my office, or I always remember people's birthdays, or I volunteer at a food bank. I feed my neighbor's cat when she's out of town or when she has a hair appointment and can't be home in time. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you write, just write it down. And in between each of those strengths after the timer goes off, Take a moment, read what you wrote out loud. I knew you knew I was going to say that, right? I mean, obviously, we know you know me by now. It's one of my strengths <laughs> that I repeat things, but that I do things over and over again that are beneficial. Once you've done that and you've read it, read it out loud, then move on to the next one until you've done this with all three of your strengths. Tip number six. Okay, I'm gonna tell you, this could involve paper and pen again, but it doesn't have to. I want you to move these strengths and all the examples of them somewhere where you can review them frequently. You can type them up if you want and print them out and post them on the wall in your home office. You can write them in your journal. You can have them framed, I don't care, whatever. Whatever works for you. Just make sure that you can read them. Tip number seven, read them. Yeah, every day. It's just as simple as that. Read them. Hmm. Why, Michael? I've already written them. I've read them before. Because we want to get our brains functioning and starting to embrace these new neural pathways that say, hey, I'm looking for the good in what I do. I'm looking at my strengths. Because in the beginning, we have to remind ourselves on a pretty frequent basis what those strengths actually are. And when we see them and read them over and over again, they become a part of us in a different way than just the fact that they were already our strengths to begin with. Tip number eight, when you're in a tough spot, maybe you have a really hard work assignment. Maybe you need to make a really critical business decision. Maybe you're having a disagreement with somebody and you're not quite sure how to end up with a positive result. 
go back to these lists, read them, ask yourself, how can these three top strengths of mine help me to reach a positive outcome? What can I learn from where my strengths are that I can put into play to make sure that I can tackle that work assignment, that I can come up with a great solution in my business challenge, that I can solve the business or the disagreement with somebody I care about. Tip number nine, pat yourself on the back as needed. When you consciously operate from your strengths, don't forget to thank yourself and praise yourself for doing so. You know, it's important because after a while, you'll find that you'll operate more consistently from the strengths. I'll tell you what, your personal and professional results will be vastly improved, but recognizing when you do it is really important to recognize, hey, I just made that business decision from my strength of kindness. I just solved that dispute with a colleague from my strength of strategy. Whatever your element is, find ways and recognize it and say, that was a good job. I'm really impressed with how you used that strength of communication to come up with something brand new and creative. Those are the pieces that will not only help you to do it more frequently, but this, the act of recognizing when you've done it alone is going to make sure that those strengths are always where you use as your kind of baseline operating system. Tip number 10, repeat process as needed. You know, kind of wash and repeat, wash and repeat. And do this at least once a year, twice if you really wanna be good at it. <laughs> but once a year is important. See, the thing is our core strengths will change over time, they always do. But when we're truly operating from our strengths, we don't lose them, we just gain more. We strengthen others. And that's when we're really evolving. That's when we really make breakthroughs that we can look back on and say, wow, look at how operating from my strengths has changed everything for the better. So operating from my strengths is what's motivating me this week. Thank you again so much for stopping by. And as always, please remember, subscribe to our channel, hit that like button, make sure to leave a comment. You know, we always respond to them. And remember that operating from your strengths will always help you to shock your potential.